Hi everyone, good evening. Are the photo pass visible? If we are visible and if I'm audible, please type in a quick yes in the chat box. So, all right, now I can see a lot of things. Uh, today's webinar is about understanding engineering post COVID era. We have with us, uh, uh, I'll just introduce the speakers to you. So, we have with us Ms. Nilanjana. She is the senior recruitment, recruitment advisor for Trinity College of Dublin, the University of Dublin, and is based in New York. Ms. Nilanjana is armed with over a decade of experience in international higher education sector. She spent nine years with London Metropolitan University, Liaison Office, India, where she joined as an office manager and worked her way up to the position of regional director, India and Nepal. Thereafter, she worked with Chopra Consul Consultants as DGM Strategic Alignment, which is in Pakistan. She holds a professional diploma in marketing from the Chartered Institute of Marketing, UK, and a bachelor degree from Delhi University. At the same time, we have Professor Sudeep Sanyal. Dr. Sudeep Sanyal is Professor and Dean Engineering and Technology. Prior to joining uh, NIIT University, Dr. Sanyal was Dean Faculty Advisor of Faculty Affairs, Member of Senate, Member of Board of Governors, Dean R&D, and Chairman Grievances Cell at Indian Institute of Technology, Alaba and subsequently Director of Faculty of Computer Science and Engineering at BML Munjal University. Dr. Samyal has worked as faculty in leading universities like Indian Institute of Information and Technology, Allahabad, Banaras Hindu University, and University of Florida. He is a PhD from Banaras Hindu University. He has over 36 years of technical te uh, of teaching and research experience. His area of research are artificial intelligence, machine learning, information retrieval, and cognitive modeling. We welcome both of you. At the same time, we have Mr. Savinay Patlula, Chief Technology Officer, Mindler, and, and an alumnus of prestigious IIT Kharagpur. He has two years core engineering experience followed by leading product and engineering across multiple edtech startups and a machine learning expert. You certainly cannot find a better person just to seek guidance from rather than someone who has walked the same path. We welcome all three of you. Thank you, Swati. So uh, we'll be starting with, uh, just, let's start by first understanding that uh, the most of the participants here are class 12 students. So let's start by understanding that J main dates have now been postponed to uh, July 18th to 23rd. That is one thing that all our participants can know. We will be walking you through a number of areas within uh, the engineering spectrum. Let's start by understanding this. Right, so we will start by un understanding engineering as a career post the COVID-19 pandemic. I'll quickly uh, give you a brief about some of the questions that we received from students. So students are concerned about what will be the role of data in the landscape, what are the types of engineering, which courses uh, in engineering would be would have maximum scope, the kinds of jobs, the impact on the IT industry, and so on. So uh, we will be walking you through all of these uh, areas one by one. We will be covering the latest trends in all of these areas. But first, let's just start by understanding data science. So data science is one of the major areas within the engineering domain. Now we have a lot of data with respect to, let's understand this with the COVID-19 uh, uh, model itself, that all the countries that we see around us, they're using data to make decisions. When, uh, when will they stop? How many people are affected? The number of deaths, the fatality, fatality rate, all of this is nothing but data. So data, when we have huge amount of data, we can actually use simple techniques to visualize that data. All of that and play around with data. That is data science. 
So, I mean, sir, would you be uh, uh, over to you to take them through the data sciences and so on? Sure, Sauti. Thank you. Okay, guys, I uh, is my am I audible? Is it clear? Okay, cool. As Swati was mentioning, so let's discuss about. Uh, yes, ma'am, voice have some disturbance. Am I audible? Clear? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead. So when you say data science, right? Suppose what is that? What is what does data science mean? So whatever situation we are in currently, right? Uh, we are facing this COVID nineteen situation. Unfortunately, uh, whatever predictions, whatever understanding of the situation, if you see, okay, fan is making sound. Just yes, is that better enough? Okay, perfect. So what uh, what does data science mean? So let's look at the current situation right now. Okay, uh, whatever COVID-19 situation, what the current trends or what are the predictions happening? Uh, it's completely based on rely, relied on data, right? So whatever flattening of the curve, whatever bell curves, uh, people are trying to achieve with lockdowns and all this stuff. It's all about data, how people are looking at it, understanding it and predicting it, right? So let's look at a small uh, uh, video. Do you have that video, Swati? So we have just taken out some random data of almost two GB file, uh, which has the population data of countries. Random data, not an accurate uh, population data of uh, last fifty years or uh, across two hundred and two hundred and fifteen countries. So that entire two hundred and fifteen country data across fifty years can be visualized with a thirty second uh, visual video. So let's quickly look at that video, Swati. Can you play that? One second. Right, right from 1960 to how the population depiction like this is this is a data set of almost two GB file which we were able to create in this visualization within 15 minutes using some tools, right? So if you see that, you will be clearly understanding okay which year, which country has surpassed uh, which all countries when it became a leader and what is the kind of proportionate difference between the populations. So this visualization is important for us to understand the whole big amount of data. So this entire data science is always going to play a key role, irrespective of uh, the situation, irrespective of uh, just a second, yeah, irrespective of where we stand uh, in terms of whether uh, we have a demand for a particular thing, don't have something. Everything is about data, right? So data analytics and data science is going to be there with us. So coming to okay, let's discuss. So we had a few questions in terms of so from the audience. Like let's quickly look at those questions. So we'll try to cover all these topics today, right? Uh, let's say uh, we have questions related to data. Let's say we have different types of engineering. What are the different jobs for engineers in future? Which engineering branch is safe for placements? What is the impact on IT industry? So let's try to quickly cover like what are the various branches of engineering, right? So. Generally, engineering is categorized into three to four different major categories, something like computer science, IT and software is under one category. Uh, all the core engineering fields like mechanical, electrical, civil, chemical come under one category. We have specific engineering fields like aerospace, uh, instrumentation, industrial production, even automobile engineering. These are specific related to one of those core engineering departments, but it's kind of uh, a subdomain of that particular core engineering. We also have exclusive engineering, which is into complete metallurgy, ocean engineering, naval architecture, mining engineering. So there's a very exclusive engineering fields where our specific type of jobs are definitely available for this. So what is the difference between all of this? So mainly we'll look at computer science later. Let's look at the core engineering first. So all this core engineering will have applications across different uh, domain. Now let's talk about uh, manufacturing and operations. So all the departments, all the plants you see. So why are we talking about this core engineering in specific? Uh, let's say we have, uh, we might be hearing a lot of news uh, about layoffs and stuff like this across different companies through in the country, even outside the country also, right? So have we heard of people laying off, uh, people getting laid off in companies like power distribution, steel manufacturing, or uh, oil extraction, I would say any company in India. So their entire basics and core is so strong that entire uh, operations or is not going to affect just with a one or two months of disturbance. So whatever pandemic pandemic we are going through, right? It has still hasn't affected the core engineering jobs. 
because their entire foundation their requirement and their play in the bigger picture or the core requirements is pretty high coming to production installation maintenance so these are all of the manufacturing sector entire core engineering also has opportunities across construction heavy engineering so anything related to our core infrastructure or core uh, logistics or engineering departments like uh, our entire so suppose even if we are surviving today it's because our uh, power supply is not disturbed our entire communication lines are not disturbed so all these four engineering departments have a lot of opportunities still forever teaching and r&d now if you get into the teaching profession research professions uh, inside all these uh, atomic centers or even nuclear scientists isro all these comes under the research and research and development also in terms of teaching if you want to become get into a professor if you want to do more research in terms of getting into a college side of stuff is teaching so core engineering has different side of opportunities if we if you look at exclusive engineering opportunities like which says aerospace instrumentation even automobile so if you look at aerospace engineering or automobile engineering all these are actually subdomains of mechanical engineering something like instrumentation engineering is a subdomain of electrical engineering so if you are unless and until if you are completely sure about a specific engineering field which you want to pursue suppose most of us would be dreaming about aeronautical aerospace stuff like that right we would generally recommend them to go for a generic engineering degree like mechanical go through those subjects you will you will have a lot of uh, very less difference between uh, the number of subjects between mechanical and aerospace for example right okay so this is about core engineering so what how is the uh, computer science engineering what are the different domains what are the different opportunities inside computer science right so whatever we see today uh, entire thing is being automated when i say automated suppose let's say uh, let's take our google maps for example right whatever machine learning ai google maps see today right if you have used google maps like four to five years ago the entire data was not sufficient for it to automatically predict or calculate the travel time but today the, everything is being automated for you to kind of travel to work travel to home so that automation is completely dependent on the it or software engineering so the way we understand the data the way we understand the existing infrastructure and automating it not only that in terms of industrial automation so if you look at uh, the actual industries uh, in terms of manpower requirement in even medium scale or small scale industries it is not easy to kind of get a workforce or a shop floor labor right so most of the robots like suppose if you take an example of uh, i hope you all have heard nano car right even 10 12 years ago the entire nano chassis design was automated using robots right so harshit is asking questions about what is the future of ai so what is ai first of all before understanding future of ai what is ai ai or machine learning is nothing but understanding the existing processes and kind of predicting the future right even suppose let's say okay we'll go into more details let's say let's talk about ai and more uh what does uh, what is the best example of ai uh I, okay we are just discussing about google maps right so not only recording the data based on satellites also recording the data based on other users who are using that particular route understanding that route and speed calculating the speed of that particular user in that particular route analyzing it and giving it to the next user right so that is an artificial intelligence which a system so ai is nothing but uh, if i have to frame it in a simple sentence ai is nothing but an intelligent and intelligent developed code which can read or understand from other experience others experience or other previous data and predicting the future that is nothing but ai or machine learning right so coming to different branches of software different uh, professions of software engineering something like application development software uh, okay shiram will get into more details about other engineering let's talk uh, stick to uh, software it or network management so what is it or network management is the entire uh, servers network management infrastructure or whatever websites whatever products you see today they have to be hosted somewhere right so that entire it or network management is a branch of software engineering which takes care of uh, maintenance execution and also uh, devops or development uh, server side of stuff okay let's take questions once this presentation is done or oh, people are asking about mechatronics robotics or uh, 
some part of automation right so when i talk about robotics what are different types of robots so if you see uh you would have heard a lot of robots and a lot of news about robots being implemented in the medicine industry people are kind of uh, to cater to all this co uh, coronavirus patients people are deploying and trying or uh, testing out service robots in the hospital industry right so that way there are different applications like in industries domestic or households medicine service military entertainment bots space robots hobby and competition robots so most of the college tech fest today between engineering college you see a lot of uh, robotics competitions right so kind of line followers uh, war between robots kind of stuff so applications of this there is even uh, a famous uh, saying among robotics groups that uh, people are targeting to beat uh, best soccer team in the european league ufa league in 2050 uh robots versus the best winner of uh, ufa league will be competing in soccer so that's the kind of uh, automation that's the kind of advanced technology which we are going to get into in robotics right okay moving on to internet of things so what is iot iot uh, this is one of the most emerging technology or application of electronics i would say in terms of uh, growth right so what is iot internet of things internet of things is nothing but uh, suppose let's say we have a small switch switchboard in our house right you can operate today you can switch on your acs you can switch on your refrigerators you can switch on your car everything from a mobile app so embedding that entire hardware or electronics into a software like a mobile app the connecting between these two is nothing but internet of things so there is also industrial internet of things where the entire water management logistics parking if you have visited a few malls recently the entire parking spots are being uh, tracked using instruments and displayed at the entry point where mentioning how many parking slots are available right so this kind of applications for iot where instrumentation combined with uh, some you can call it robotics you can call it uh, electronics it is being applied across different industries right so iot has a lot of few your business in terms of uh, let's say if you look at the market prediction age of growth of 7% from current 77 billion in 2020 to almost 110 billion in 2025 right so iot is nothing but, okay we'll get into more details i'll quickly cover up all those queries which are asking about uh, marine engineering or etc so we'll just quickly complete what are the latest trends among this so cyber security so how many of you have heard about cyber security right why is this important so everyone is working from home uh, in today's scenario 50% of the employers are actually not even aware that their servers are being uh, tracked through the network so that is a network security which is not in place for most of the companies who are doing the work from home but their servers are actually have been exposed to a lot of uh, data breaches right so bigger companies like linkedin facebook and these things we hear in news we hear a lot of them right if you look at this few articles like linkedin 2012 data breach may have hit over 100 million data so data is not just always about pure individual user data points or uh, contact details of a user it can be anything it can be uh, the huge amount of data which a company has uh, kind of collected for its internal research use for building their future products that entire data leakage will lead to the flop in their entire business model also right so that way cyber security cyber security is nothing but protecting your entire servers and your data a company's or an organization's data inside a particular server by having a enough number of firewalls and access mechanism just by storing it and locking it inside a server will not protect it ultimately its own employees have to access that data through particular channels so kind of creating safe network and safe channels to access that data involves entire cyber security so cyber security as career is growing pretty high when you look at uh, the amount of opportunities if you see over the last 10 years it has grown the number of opportunities i would say roughly has grown more than like 10 to 15 times the number of opportunities which we had 10 years ago right okay so moving on artificial intelligence and automation as we have discussed so people have been saying ki ai is kind of uh, killing the jobs it will eliminate a lot of jobs but it is not kind of eliminating jobs it is kind of uh, shifting the job market from one domain to the other like let's say suppose if we have any repetitive or uh, predictive roles right 
those roles will be automated suppose someone let's say there is a manufacturing line you have to place one object from particular one line to this line at a particular interval of every 2 seconds so you don't need a human doing it unless and until there is some uh, intelligence to be applied on that system right so kind of uh, any repetitive task which can be automated will be automated using ai or robots or automation but there is a different set of job market which is emerging like understanding that process and kind of building the data set and feeding it to the ai that itself is a very big domain which can never be finished at least in the next 50 to 60 years or even 100 years understanding the data and feeding it into the automation uh, line right or automation process will be never ending requirement so that way ai is not completely eliminating jobs it is kind of shifting the job market from one domain to a slightly different domain harshit like pen testing so penetration testing yes it is also a part of cyber security which we have discussed sir uh, can you also mention a couple of lines you are about how the students can go about making a career uh, making a career in ai making a career in iot how are the students going to explore those arenas right uh, professor sudeep vidas will take us more through in the end of this seminar about it in terms of the academic degree pursuing but yeah coming to suppose let's take uh, my situation right so i have studied in iit kharagpur 2007 to 11 like almost 12 years ago uh, i didn't have any subject called machine learning or ai per se which teaches us what does ai do or how to build things right what we have learned is we have learned what does each process do what is uh, what are the different engineering domains or what are the different stuff we have learned very good amount of logical reasoning today whatever we are doing in terms of building machine learning models or in terms of ai as a career it's just that we have been adaptive to situations right so to kind of have an academic background to ai or machine learning anything related to maths and statistics or computer science or software engineering as a background will be good for you to get into ai as a domain in terms of academics but yes this is not mandatory if you are good at if you can understand if you have today knowledge is available everywhere if you can uh, understand the structure of learning and kind of get to it you can get a job in ai or data science for example right now coming to iot iot is a very specific field in terms of it's a combination of some hardware and software uh, to apply uh, in different domains it has a requirement of background of electronics for some uh, domains right so that uh, combination of electronics plus some hardware related to electrical or instrumentation or sensors so background with electronics engineering or instrumentation engineering or even electrical engineering can get into iot domain and you can be an expert on iot and you can start building products on iot also right well i hope that has answered uh, the question so yes yes okay moving on so another big thing which people are not aware of or i would say very less spoken about right so ethical hacking cyber security robotics everyone speaks about so but what about the computing or storage capacity which we see today the first image which you see on the slide here right so this is kind of a very old computer like i think i don't know the exact year or the size of the computer uh it must be like in general it is said it was said that like 40 50 years ago if you have to have a 16 kb or kilobyte uh, ram computer it's almost the size of a half of your bedroom right but today if you look at the i was just searching for a pen drive last week right i was i found this 2 tb data traveler pen drive size in a 2 tb uh, with a 2 tb space so the storage capacity has been so much enhanced over the last 10 to 15 years that there is no restriction of amount of data you can store right so from a 16 kb 16 kb ram computer occupying half a bedroom to a 2 tb ram occupying the size of a pen drive so we have evolved storage level to a kind of a complete different level right so what does it entail so what does this mean so uh, let's take a best example if you speak about data if whatever you use daily you use google right suppose let's say take an ex- best example of google so google does not search the internet when you submit a query for suppose covid 19 if you just search something in google right it doesn't go and search across all its servers every time it has got more than 100 million gigabytes is what it claims but definitely the index is much more than that right so fetching the data from there and giving it to you in in a fraction of second if you see a google result or any search result or any website for that matter if you see that it is taking more than one or two seconds to load 
you as a user, you wouldn't, we wouldn't have that patience to wait for that, right? So the cloud computing or the kind of background servers, right? Whatever, <coughs> excuse, whatever that storage capacity or cloud computing capacity, the Google servers or Facebook servers or any network or any big, uh, even Amazon for that matter, AWS, right? These servers have the, such a capacity or such a computing power that we can't even imagine what it can do. So whatever cryptocurrency mining you saw in the recent years, whatever uh, current search engines you are seeing currently. So all these have a lot of application in terms of cloud computing. So again, coming back to it, what is cloud computing? It's all about processing a particular amount of application or a particular uh, uh, type of process uh, with the limited resources available with, with best possible time, with minimum possible time, right? So that entails the entire cloud computing industry. So uh, even if you look at today academics, right, very few colleges are offering uh, careers in ethical hacking or cybersecurity or cloud computing or even AI. But in terms of job market, if you talk to any industries, if you talk to any uh, actual uh, people working in companies, right? So there is a lot of requirement if someone can understand cloud servers also, right? We are ready to hire them tomorrow, right? That's the kind of requirement. So, okay. Uh, we have discussed about different careers in related to software, machine learning, AI, cybersecurity, and cloud computing. Let's take a few uh, quick questions. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Uh, so Krishnam is asking, what is the advantage of pursuing MBA after completing BTEC? So Krishnam, generally MBA is pursued. So suppose let's say we have discussed a few opportunities, career opportunities after engineering, right? Suppose let's say you go into a manufacturing sector, right? In manufacturing sector, ultimately, uh, especially let's talk about India as a career, right? So in manufacturing sector, you will become an engineer or kind of a manager. You will be managing a particular uh, uh, process line, right? So with an MBA degree, you will be growing faster in terms of understanding people. So till that point, you will be just understanding the missions. You will be understanding the processes and stuff. If you want to understand the people, people management to grow further faster in your career, if you want to stay in that manufacturing sector, you definitely need to go for an MBA there, right? So with some experience uh, pursuing uh, engineering followed by your manufacturing experience followed by an MBA would give you a better career prospects for future. Uh, Anushree is asking, is marine engineering applicable for girls? Uh, Anushree will just check that and get back to you. Uh, there are some restrictions definitely for marine or naval engineering. So I think it is applicable for girls. You can pursue that, but we'll definitely confirm and uh, get back to you about it. We can do ethical hacking as a career or just a skill in India. So Harshit, ethical hacking is definitely a particular career in India, right? But if you are looking for specific degrees, so undergraduate degrees in ethical hacking, you wouldn't get it. It's still a skill-based career, right? So you have to pursue generic computer science or computer applications as a career and pursue ethical hacking as an add-on in terms of your subjects or your uh, certifications. That would be better for you to pursue a career in ethical hacking. Okay, people asking, yeah, Swati, can we take yeah. questions? So, or, uh, or? With respect to uh, those specializations that we're talking about, so a lot of people are asking about, uh, I don't know who that was. Somebody asked about university. Pranav asked about universities and college for colleges for artificial intelligence. So I just wanted to add here that Pranav, you can pick up any domain. You can build domain knowledge and pick this up as a specialization at the master's level, or as a lot of colleges offer this at the bachelor's level as a specialization as well. So that's one aspect. Then, so there was another question about environment uh, applications of AI in, in environment applications of. Uh, different uh, areas of robotics. So these are also questions that students are so, asking. Okay, one interesting question. So I think I also saw a couple of questions related to environment engineering. Environment engineering, so it's all about safety. Suppose, have you heard about 5G getting released in a few countries, but 5G is still not being kind of approved in a uh, few, a lot more countries, right? So why is that uh, a problem? So by incorporating 5G into our network bandwidth today, will actually, uh, uh, disturb a lot in terms of uh, environment, right? So the bandwidth or the frequency required, it will, it is going to disturb a lot of environment. Even if you take, it, take any industry, right? Uh, any manufacturing industry or any process or any power plant per se, right? Without a safety engineering department who are concerned about uh, people safety and also environment safety, right? You would not see a single manufacturing plant at all. So 
environment engineering's career scope is definitely there in terms of there is a huge requirement but environment engineering is not such a career where you can kind of grow uh, 10x in your uh, career in terms of financially or in terms of your position within 5 years of your job right it is more of a slow process understanding stuff and kind of gaining that experience it's more of a slow growing career but definitely a requirement is there all across right sir can we have uh, thank you so much for the answer with that question can we have miss nilanjana now take us through uh, uh, trinity college dublin and with her presentation miss nilanjana please join us so So Swati, just to quickly add, tell Miss Nijanjana joins right. As right. most of our audience are in twelfth, as you also mentioned, uh, I think hmm. of you might be writing JE or NEET, right? So JE is postponed. JE mains is uh, conducted from July eighteenth to twenty third, right? And NEET is on July twenty sixth. Hope you all are aware about it, right? Yes, July eighteenth to twenty third. So July eighteenth to twenty third is our JE mains, and July twenty sixth is our NEET. And I think JE advanced date is also declared just today. sometime in august august 22nd or 23rd i guess right so guys be prepared so right also all the best yeah please sir uh hamdan has asked a question about preparation techniques for je hamdan i would like to uh, tell you that we've already covered that in depth there is another webinar you can uh, you can take the link you can write to us and we'll send you the link and you can access that it's also uploaded on the mindler youtube page So check that out for more tips on JE preparation. Uh, Miss Nilanjana, she she here? She's here. I think she's facing some technical issues. Yeah. Uh, Miss Nilanjana, we can't hear you. Okay, till ma'am joins in. uh no ma'am you're not audible can you just try to join again or maybe check your mic gorov batnagar is asking foreign for engineering is a better option or iit is better if you can crack iit that's definitely better gorov but yeah it all depends on your entire career prospects what you what are you looking forward to in future someone has asked like how do i know whether a right engineering is right for me or not so minder has built an entire business model on it so we please go through our minder assessment which will give you a better idea on which course to pursue and why you are better doing a particular course or not best colleges for robotics yashwant will get back to you please drop a mail uh, we'll give you the list of colleges for sure yashwant has also asked about specializations in robotics so yashwant i would say that that's a that's at the post graduation level after you've had some experience robotics so itself is a specialization actually no ma'am you are not audible can you please reload the page or something so okay. so uh, harshit yeah. has asked about what is more important the skill or the college so that's an interesting question over there that we can answer i think uh, okay what is the question exactly is it what is more important 
So can I, I didn't get uh, it. Sorry. Can you repeat? Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Can okay, good. Okay, Swati will continue the Q&A at the end of the session. Hi, everyone. Um, Swati, I hope I'm audible now. Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, so I'll quickly go through the presentation. My name is Nilanjana and I'm the Senior Recruitment Advisor for Trinity College Dublin. I'll start with a brief overview of what Ireland as a country and Dublin as a city offer to international students. Uh, Ireland is a small country, both in size and population, but one with a long tradition in education excellence, offering an innovative and creative culture. It is also the fastest growing economy in Europe, the most entrepreneurial country in Europe, and the first in Europe for completion of third level uh, education, which in simple words, means that Ireland has the lowest dropout rate at the university level across all European countries. It is also a tech hub with over 1200 multinational companies that have substantial operations in Ireland. And with Brexit, Ireland is the only English speaking country in the European Union. So we are expecting even more businesses to move into Ireland in the near future. Moving now to the economic climate, it is led by ICT, as you can see, a global giants such as Intel, Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, eBay, Twitter have long established operations in Ireland. And Dublin is Europe's um, leading hub of innovative gaming companies like EA, Big Fish, Havoc, Zynga, Jolt, PopCap, Riot Games, and many more. Also, uh, the top pharma, biopharma companies are located in Ireland. It is Europe's largest manufacturer and exporter of medical tech devices, particularly knee implants and pacemakers. And also the top financial consultancy services are based in Ireland. Moving now quickly to Dublin. Dublin is a young, friendly, cosmopolitan uh, city. And like any other European capital city, it is very well connected by various means of transport. But more importantly, it is one of the best student cities in the world, offering a safe and stimulating experience as a UNESCO city of literature, while also being a global tech hub. Coming now to Trinity, uh, it is one of the seven ancient universities along with Oxford and Cambridge. And these seven universities are ancient because they are more than 400 years old. What it means to our students is that they are educated at an institution which has centuries of experience of designing education and delivering education. This is really what sets apart uh, Trinity from various other universities. This is an aerial view of Trinity's campus. We have a 47 acre campus right in the heart of Dublin city center. This slide gives you a snapshot of our campuses that form the global innovation hub surrounded by numerous giants. I'm sure you can easily identify the unmistakable G and the A and the F among various other leading companies. So Trinity old and new, we are now in our 428th year and the old library is a symbol of our legacy, while the science gallery stands for our modern identity of a research-centered, world-leading institution. Trinity has actively built upon its tradition of academic excellence, and in our 428th year, we are ranked 108th in the world and among top 100 for employability of our graduates. It is also the only Irish university to be part of the prestigious Leru, and we are also the most entrepreneurial university in Europe for the fifth consecutive year. A small university, I would think a medium-sized university is what Trinity is, with 18,000 students and about 3,600 staff. Some of our notable alumni, including the current Prime Minister of Ireland, Leo Varadkar, who's also the son of a Mumbai doctor. He studied medicine at Trinity some more of our illustrious 
alumni. Coming now to our programs, all our undergrad degrees are four-year honors degree. In engineering and computer science, we also offer a five-year integrated master's degree. Our academic program is very similar to US since we are talking about engineering, so I'll just stick to that, which is 75% of the weekly schedules are timetabled, whereas 25% are independent. And all students have to complete a capstone project in the final year that accounts for 40% of the final bachelor degree mark. Your years one and two do not contribute to the degree mark, but students have to pass each module. So our programs uh, are a mix of timetabled and independent learning. I want to briefly talk about P3, which is one of the most prestigious and extremely ambitious initiative at uh, Trinity. So E3 stands for Engineering Environment and Emerging Technologies. And it is a multi-million euros initiative, first of its kind in Irish history, uh, which aims to revolutionize education by integrating engineering, scientific, and tech expertise in order to efficiently manage the various challenges that the world faces, such as the one that we are dealing with at the moment. So E3 will co-locate our schools of engineering, computer science, and natural sciences and state-of-the-art facilities to prepare a new set of our graduates to lead the technology-driven ecosystems of the future, so uh, our new facilities are due to be ready by 2021. So the cohort of engineering and computer science students the, who join us this year will indeed be spending two years of their programs at the E3 Learning Foundry. The first four schools of the eight schools within the Faculty of Engineering, Maths and Science fall under E3, which are engineering, computer science, physics, and natural sciences. This is the structure of our undergrad degree. The first two years are common, and the third year gives the students an option to choose one out of the six specializations that we offer. In the third year, you also decide whether you would want to exit at four years, which is a fully taught degree, or you can choose the integrated route in which the fourth year is made up of, um, half a year is made up of classes, and half a year you can choose to do an internship, which is organized by the university, or you can also choose to spend it at one of our collaborators across the world. Okay. And do your caption project in the fifth year then. Ms. Milanjana, uh, I have a question here for you. So why do you think uh, students should choose to study at Trinity in general, and specifically engineering degrees offered at Trinity College? If you could tell us a little more about that. Sure. See, most importantly, that Trinity has centuries of experience of designing education and delivering education, like I said. That is a major difference, and that is a major attribute that I think which sets us apart. Uh, we have continued to build upon our tradition of academic excellence, and um, we are ranked 108th in the world, largely because of our focus on research, the quality of our faculty, and our industry collaboration. The same applies to our School of Engineering, which again is one of the oldest in the world. We are 178 years old, and it is still among the top 1% in the world, which is no mean, uh, you know, mean feat. So I would think these are the major attributes. And secondly, it is uh, that at year four, students complete a capstone project, which is directly linked to real research projects, which is how they earmark their career outcomes, right, while they are still studying. And uh, the paid internship is another way to which translates more often than not, it always translates into the first job for our students. Then our careers, uh, the, uh, career services, which is an award-winning service, which helps our students to connect with the industry through career fairs, through events, through networking opportunities. And also we have a very unique alumni mentoring service, which is a key resource in linking our students with the desired industry. So I would think these are the factors because of which Trinity students are the most highly paid and the most highly sought after in our These would be the key reasons for students to choose Trinity. Right. So, ma'am, uh, uh, some of the questions are asking if uh, they need to take SAT exam to get through. So, if you could help us a little bit, please do this right now. No, we do not uh, require SAT. All admissions are on the basis of class 12. 
Uh, we require a minimum of 80%. Maths is a mandatory subject specific requirement and we would need a minimum of 75% in maths. That, these are the only requirements. And we also need an English proficiency exam, such as IELTS or TOEFL or uh, PTE. And uh, we give out conditional offers on the basis of predicted scores. And in addition to this, we also need two LORs and the personal statement. So it's fairly simple and straightforward. Thank you, ma'am. That was very useful. Uh, one more question for you. So, particularly with respect to engineering, uh, with, with respect to tech, what exposure do you think the students get into the industry in Ireland? Since Ireland is now emerging as a tech hub for Europe, and Dublin has the headquarters, headquarters for a number of tech companies. So, what do you think would be the uh, exposure that the students would get? See, the expo exposure throughout uh, the as soon as they start the first year, I would think it is difficult. The first year of our engineering program is fundamentals. The second year is more application based, but it is mostly from the third year that uh, when we start looking at their learning outcomes and career outcomes and students start engaging with the career services, which conducts over 200 workshops across the year. But the School of Engineering in itself is very proactive. They have their own career fairs. A lot of industry interface is provided to the students. And particularly, it is the capstone project. In fact, it is the capstone project indeed, which determines the kind of employers, the kind of companies who are going to be interested in, in a particular graduate. So the caption project is definitely the key distinguishing factor that we provide to our students, which indeed sets their career path rolling as soon as they step into the job market after the completion of their studies. Right. So All right. So engineering with management is our other program for students who are looking to combine tech with management. It is possible to do it at Trinity at the undergrad level. These are some of the examples I was talking about the capstone projects so or a few slides about the kind of research projects or the capstone projects that our students do. This is relates to civil structural and environmental engineering. This is relative to mechanical and manufacturing engineering and then electronic and electrical engineering. So a very vast range of projects depending on what is the preferred industry that a student wants to go on to. And this is for computer engineering. So life after graduation, as you can see here, a vast majority steps right into industrial employment after the completion of their graduation. A very small percentage is looking at further study and a very fraction, a small fraction is looking at seeking employment. And a um, snapshot of the kind of employment employers we have been ranging from Abbott to Accenture, to Rolls-Royce, Workday, as well as Medtronic. Global connections, when we were talking about the uh, fifth year integrated, these are the kind of uh, universities that the students can pick and choose to the second uh, semester of the fourth year. We would have the top universities across the world as our partners. And what Trinity gives, apart from academic rigor, is also a transformative student experience. These are the two pillars of Trinity education, and the experience is through the 170 sports clubs and societies that we have. We offer a very vibrant student community. Two of the oldest student societies belong to Trinity, and any interest a student may have outside of the class, we could have a state of the art facility for it, whether it is sports or theaters or galleries or museums, we have all of it on campus. Thank you so much, ma'am, for walking us through the life at Trinity, through the engineering degrees available. Thank you so much for the presentation, ma'am. Thanks very much. So these would be the entry requirements, as I've already explained. And this is how they apply. I've already touched upon this as well. I just want to talk about the fee. It's about 26,000 euros annual fee. And these are the scholarships, particularly for engineering. We have the E3 scholarship, which ranges from four to five thousand euros, four thousand euros per year. So each year of your engineering, you can get a scholarship of four to five thousand euros. And this needs to be applied separately. These are not automatic. These are merit based. And we have five hundred thousand worth of funds towards these scholarships. 
and these would be available for those who are looking to get an admit in 2020 itself. And this is uh, Ireland's response to COVID-19. It is the Irish economy said to be the least affected to the pandemic. And Ireland is ranked sixth, whereas Dublin is ranked 13th in terms of the response to COVID-19. And also in terms of the in support that Ireland is offering to international students. Any international student who may have lost their part-time job is entitled to an emergency payment of 350 euros per week, as well as free access to healthcare services. Just to um, underline the welcoming and safe and friendly destination that Ireland is. That is the last slide. I hope you found the presentation to be useful. In case you have any questions, this is my email ID. You can always get in touch with me. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Matt. Thank you. Uh, we now have Professor Sudeep, who will walk us through the programs at NIIT. Professor Sudeep, we welcome you. Okay, so can I have the slides, please? Yeah. So we're talking about uh, the university, the NIIT University. And uh, we like to call it the University of the Future. So I would like to give you a glimpse of what this university is like. Now, the point is that we can uh, talk about, OK, can we go to the next slide, please? So, uh, so let me tell you why we call it like this. Basically, you see, the pedagogy has such that it has been designed by academicians and industry experts. Now, actually, in this university, we are very particular about building up our students to be extremely relevant by the time they graduate. So that is why the students are trained on technologies that are actually used by the industry. Now, that's actually saying something because what happens is that in most of the universities, uh, the students end up working on, say, open source software and maybe toy models, but they don't really get to see what is happening in the industry. But here, since the whole curriculum is designed with industry experts, therefore, the students get trained on the stuff which the industry uses. So this basically makes them future ready, first of all. And then it is something that uh, it's a part of a curriculum where we also tell the students to learn to pick up new technologies. Now, that's equally important because technology is constantly evolving. And in an evolving scenario like this, you need to have the skill to pick up new technology because maybe you will graduate in four years. So, but the new technology may come five years or 10 years down the line, that is long after you have graduated. And yet you need to pick it up in order to survive, in order to have a good career. So we want our students to be able to pick up new technology on their own. And in fact, they're actually trained. So there are a lot of projects that the students do over here. And in those projects, this training is actually imparted to them. And then on top of that, we have a very holistic approach where we have got, say, a lot of uh, humanities and other courses. So this actually helps to round off the personality of the student. And uh, it sort of gives them the context of the places where the whole technology is to be applied. So the four basic principles on which this entire thing is built is that we have got strong industry link that the entire education is very technology based. That is why even when everything closed down due to this uh, COVID business, we could easily transit from our normal classroom mode of teaching to the virtual mode. We even conducted our examinations and everything. So because we were already technology based, we are extremely research driven, by the way. And not only the faculty, but also the students are encouraged to do a lot of research. So. In addition to the capstone projects, we also have R&D projects where the students are encouraged to do research. And we not only encourage the students, but uh, we also support them financially. So if a student wants to stay back during the summer vacation, we actually give them a stipend so that they can stay back and do some research work. Or if they manage to publish a paper, then we say in a conference, that we actually support their travel and everything else. So a lot of financial support is given to the students. 
and in fact one of our students recently won a best paper award in one of the international conferences so that's the level of work that our undergraduate students are doing and we try to do everything in a very seamless fashion so a young student who is just a class 12 pass out may enter and then by the time he graduates out from the university he is a mature professional who is ready to take his place in the corporate world so and the whole transition is very seamless so that's the sort of thing that we do over here and then if we go forward then we'll see that uh, so if you go to the next slide so you'll see the sort of uh, specializations that we have so basically we have some courses as usual so there are four year btech programs in computer science and engineering in electronics and communication engineering and in biotechnology then we have got a four year integrated mba course there there's a four year integrated msc in computer science and this is for actually pcb students because we believe that the biology students who missed out on some maths courses in their class 11 and 12 they should also get an opportunity to specialize in this direction and then we have got some five year integrated mtech courses and these are in very advanced areas like gis like education technology and so on so these are the basic courses and then for specialization so okay, you can go to the next slide thank you hmm. so and then if you look at the specializations so remember this is a part of our btech program so anybody who is specializing in cse so he would be allowed to uh, i mean anybody who is pursuing btech in cse would be allowed to specialize in artificial intelligence in big data engineering and cloud computing cyber security data science mind you we are talking about specializations for undergraduate courses so basically the way the whole thing is designed is that in the first four semesters the students learn a lot of core fundamentals so they have got a strong foundation and then we try to build these specializations so the students don't really have to wait for a uh, mtech program to do these specializations they can do it while they are btech so for example i saw a lot of people showing a lot of interest in uh, cyber security yes we have a specialization in cyber security and uh, ethical hacking penetration testing etc is one of the courses and they'll be using tools which the industry actually uses so that's the sort of thing that we have similarly in ece i saw a lot of interest in internet of things and stuff like that yes we have all that we also have uh, specializations in wireless communication or signal processing or robotics and automation so and within each specialization the way it is designed is that we'll be doing five to six elective courses and we'll be doing at least three projects so that's the sort of effort that we put in in building up our students similarly there is biotechnology where we do a lot of work in environmental biotechnology in plant biotechnology there is industrial biotechnology food and bioinformatics so we personally believe that food beverages area is something which is going to grow extremely fast and uh, also industrial biotechnology particularly from the pharmaceutical sector that's another area which is growing extremely fast and they will definitely be there in the post covid era also okay so now can we go to the Sir, next slide uh, since we are at the uh, at the topic of biotechnological engineering can you talk a little bit about how that sector would change uh, post the covid era and what are the what are the opportunities that students would have particularly at NI, at your university with respect to the biotechnological engineering also the eligibility criteria whether it's pcb or maths is mandatory everybody even pcb can take admission in biotechnology that's the first thing and uh, the second is as far as job opportunities are concerned we see a tremendous growth in this area because people will be shifting towards these products whether we are talking about bioinformatics which is primarily about discovering new drugs trying it out at the uh, simulation level and so on that's definitely going to happen people are going to go more and more for e-commerce for online businesses they are going to buy their food from amazon and other such uh, vendors and so food biotechnology is another area which is going to grow pharmaceutical which is part of your industrial biotechnology that is definitely going to grow 
anything to do with agriculture is going to become very important and that's why plant biotechnology is important for us and by the way we prepare our students in uh, and since we take this sector very seriously since we see it as one of the sunshine areas for at least india so that is why what we believe is that the students should be trained on the latest things so if anybody wants to visit our lab they're most welcome i mean of course the lockdown has, has to be over for that but what they'll see is state of the art labs over here and that's really impressive in fact many industry people actually want to get trained in our labs because they don't see the same sort of thing in their own labs that's the sort of thing that we have over here and yes uh, so we have uh, okay and somebody has asked something about robotics and automation adit so adit we do have ro robotics and automation as one of the specializations in the ec branch which means you are going to do something like five elective courses in that which will cover more or less all the things that you need to know about robotics and on top of that you will be doing projects by the way we are very very project based our courses so you will actually start doing projects right from the first semester and then you will be doing additional projects so we have two capstone projects in the 6th and 7th semesters where we actually get problems from the industry by the way nit university has got very strong linkages with the industry and we work with almost 600 different industries so we get problems from the industry these are converted into capstone projects which our students execute so you'll be doing two capstone projects across two semesters and you'll be doing an r and d project where you'll be developing your own stuff so that's the sort of uh, training that you're going to get over here so believe me by the time you graduate out from here you'll be pretty good okay and then going forward if we look at uh, the specializations that are available for the five year mtech course so we have got computer science and engineering again electronics and communication engineering biotechnology and then we have got these very interesting two extra specializations which are education technology and geographic information systems so education technology is actually talking about developing or using technology for education but that's only half of it the other half is it's actually talking about how to deliver that is how should one teach what is the best way of teaching what is the best way of learning how does one make it effective does gamification work should we have projects uh, running through various semesters or can we bring in multidisciplinary projects to what extent can we have experiential learning and actually measuring this is important that we actually try to measure whether whatever process we have followed whether that has worked or not so that is what education technology is all about and it's going to become important as we go further and geographic information systems i'm sure all of you are familiar with it because all of you use your google maps etc but it actually goes far beyond that so all sorts of satellite image processing and so on they are happening over here so those are the specializations in our five year mtech program and then so going forward i would like to show you something more about uh, so can we go to the next slide please yeah so in addition to whatever i've said so far we also have an opportunity where the students can do extra minors so these minors are basically certificate programs that will run parallel to your degree program so you might be doing a btech with computer science and engineering but then you can also opt for an extra minor in maybe either finance or business analytics or entrepreneurship so basically this minors gets an alternate pathway for the students i mean if a student first thinks that he wants to do electronics but then by the time he goes into the third year he realizes that he is more interested in say entrepreneurship so he can actually do a minor in entrepreneurship and perhaps he can use that minor to set up his own startup and incidentally we give a very strong support for the startups so and a lot of successful startups have come out of this university till now so that's another thing which i wish i had a little more time where i could have emphasized on that part but we are really strong on that and 
it's not just that we provide an incubation center, but we also provide the sort of mentorship and we provide the industry connects that you require to take a startup from its inception to the final market. So that entire ecosystem is provided by us. And not only that, a lot of industry connects. So students can get good mentors. Students can also get ready markets. Everything is available. Any legal advice or any financial advice, any connects with your venture capitalists. So all those things are available in our system. So and this. Sir, article, can you? Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask you about the uh, the specializations that you offer, unconventional specializations in engineering. Some of those, can you talk about those and how they would create an opportunity for students linking them to the minors that you offer? Yeah, so the specializations in BTEC and MTEC, they're all very industry linked. That's the point that I was trying to make because we design our courses in consultation with the industry. So if you just go to the previous slide, you'll see all the specializations over here. So it covers just about everything that is becoming very relevant today. And it is going to remain relevant for the next at least 10 to 20 years. So and then in addition to that, we also teach our students to pick up skills on their own which means they're going to stay relevant for their entire career, which might be spanning three, four decades. So as you can see, right. we have got artificial intelligence, big data engineering, cloud computing, cybersecurity, data science. So uh, you people have touched upon these earlier. They're all offered as specializations in our university. So that's the sort of thing that we have. Similarly, IoT so or robotics and automation, etc. everything is there in this list. So it looks like a laundry list, but actually it's a very important right. list. Sir? Right. Sir, so could you also help us uh, with respect to understanding, help students with respect to understanding the relevance of these specializations in how uh, engineering would change post the COVID era in India? Okay, post the COVID era, what I feel is that people are going to become far more conscious of certain things, especially of social distancing. I think all of us have become painfully aware of it because of this lockdown. Now, what social distancing means is that we need to have a certain space, which means your work from home is going to happen far more than what it was happening earlier. Of course, many of us are doing work from home, but then it's not always possible to do that. But it's definitely going to increase because people have realized this as a viable option for many different uh, careers. So since work from home is going to increase, so all those technologies that uh, sort of support it are definitely going to be big in the future. And it is going to be driven by a lot of artificial intelligence, a lot of data analytics or data science, a lot of cloud computing will be required. And as we use more and more of e-commerce, so your cybersecurity is also going to be very important. So that is one sort of thing which is going to happen. The second thing is that uh, we had earlier speakers who had touched upon, say, manufacturing and all that. Well. That is one place where it is not so easy to work from home because after all, things have to get manufactured on the factory floors. So, but what is probably going to happen is that more and more automation is going to happen. So your robotics and automation and your internet of things, they're going to become very important. And your communication technologies are also going to remain very important because the more we rely on our networks for doing all our transactions, so your communication systems have to be extremely important. And we are definitely going to have a huge change in your VLSI and embedded systems because we are going to move towards lighter things. We are going to move towards miniaturization of various things. That's also part of communication and space technology, by the way, where you require a huge amount of miniaturization. So your VLSI and embedded systems are also going to grow. So anything that pushes us towards this sort of automation again, any technology, that is definitely going to grow. The other sectors where we see a huge growth is uh, things like uh, your environmental science, because people have become aware of it, or healthcare, your medical biology 
or medical technology as it's called medical engineering biomedical engineering and so on again there's a combination of biotechnology computer science and ece so everything is going to come together so these are the sunrise areas on the other hand we feel that your uh, transportation sector is probably going to take a hit post covid similarly we are already seeing some problems with the hospitality sector so those will be sectors which will probably uh, have a bit of a rough time post covid but the ones that are listed over here these are definitely going to grow at a very rapid rate now including online education by the way online education i mean i was just looking at a report by google and they're anticipating that in the next couple of years it's definitely going to at least double up if not grow further so that's the sort of transformation that we are all anticipating now but of course we have got our ugcs and other mandatory bodies and uh, so we have to follow those regulations but uh, we do see a lot of growth in these areas thank you so much sir thank you so much for walking us through uh, the different specializations the different minors yes. and how it would shape and, the and so the last slide is just to give you a glimpse of this beautiful campus it's actually a very clean and green campus extremely safe and you can see we have the aravallis at our backdrop and uh, it was voted as the sixth most beautiful campus in the entire country and that's for several years running and we also have a huge emphasis on uh, sustainability that's something that we believe in and uh, well i have talked to a lot of students and they all say that the campus life is just great so so basically that's all that i had to say about this university thanks thank you so much sir. thank you to all the speakers and uh, with respect to the questions that students have i hope your questions have been taken up and you can always reach out to us at helloatminder.com that is another uh, area where you can reach out to us and we'll be happy to address all of your questions so avinash would you like to add something on that uh yes so the no right now actually we are good we are actually stretched our time a lot people are uh, being right. here patiently listening to us for long sir i would like to thank sudeep sir and miss lanjana ma'am uh thanks a lot for your time thanks for enlightening us with your opportunities right okay friends anyone any questions about any specific career any prospects anything we are happy to answer so this is our email id hello at the rate mindler.com please drop us a quick mail and we'll be happy to connect with you and discuss about it Thank you sir thank you guys thank you, thank you. Okay. bye everybody bye bye